Welcome to our winter edition for our wine club. Um, in your package, when you receive it, you will uh, find a brochure in it. And when the time comes and with your friend, you decide to open one of these bottles, please click on that QR code and join me for a tasting. This is our Estate Chardonnay Musquet 2021. And we are really happy about this wine. This is the first time ever we released this wine as a single varietal. Um, and we did about 50 cases this year. And we are thrilled about the quality of that wine. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit of our Chard Musquet. So this is planted on our, on our own farm. So when I say estate wine, these wines are produced on site at Adamo Estate Winery, made on site and bottled on site. Um, so this is coming from our own vines. And Chardonnay Musquet is probably the same profile as Chardonnay, but it's much more floral, a lot more fragrance on the bouquet. Um, so we aged that wine for eight months in oak, uh, French oak only, but no new oak, only like old barrels. This is to add texture and a little bit more color. Usually the Chardonnay Musquet um, is a little bit less golden and you can see that in the glass. It's a little bit more on the silver notes where the Chardonnay is more on the golden um, hues, let's say. So you'll find mandarin peel on the nose. This is very elegant. Um, sometimes Chardonnay Musquet can be very pungent, but this is well integrated. Um, and I think because we used a little bit of oak and let it a little bit settle and age a little bit longer than um, I'd say most common practices. Um, so you also have the nutty characteristic, you also have the fresh peach, apricot, apricot is definitely there. And in the mouth, it's usually a little bit more um, acid driven than the Chardonnay. So for that wine, we don't do the malolactic fermentation, which is the second fermentation that happens in the red wines and in the, some of the white wines, such as Chardonnay. And this is just allows the wine to keep the freshness and also the aromatics, those beautiful fragrance that you have. Um, this is why we don't do it. So it's uh, probably like a dry style wine that would pair perfectly with some charcuterie board or cheese platter. Or if you're looking to pair it with some food, then you can do it with fish, but then you would like to have like something creamy on the side, like mashed potatoes, or use a cream base for your fish, for example. Okay, this is our legacy Malbrusco Pet Nat 2021. Um, so the idea of Malbrusco came um, from the Adamo family, uh, from their background, from the Italian background. Um, so it's a contraction of Malbec and Lembrusco. Basically, Lembrusco is a very popular, typical um, red sparkling wine in Italy. Um, so they wanted to have the similar things, but do it in their own way. So we, they decided to put it in the legacy uh, series, which is of our very minimal intervention category of the wines. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about Petnat. Petnat means pétillant naturel. So it means that basically this is the most an ancestral way to make sparkling wine. Uh, this is like, we're talking about 17th century, like way back. And um, basically they didn't know how to make wine back in the days and basically because of the very cold summer, the fermentation would stop and they would say, oh, okay, the wine is ready, we're going to put it into bottle. But then what happened in the spring, when the temperature rise, the fermentation restarted in the bottles and then the wine were sparkly. So nowadays, Petnac are back in the front of the scene of the winemaking industry and they are very trendy. Uh, because of their natural way of how they are made. So, because we bottle them and they finish the fermentation inside the bottle, you'll observe usually there is a sediment inside the bottle, which is total normal, it's just dead yeast. But that might cause 
the bottle when you open it to fizz a little bit and overflow. So just when you open that, it's very red and it can taint your couch. So probably open it in your kitchen. Um, this bottle is completely fine. They are usually fine, but there is, there is always a risk. So, And then because it's a red wine, you can choose either or to chill it or not. Um, I recommend that you put it in the fridge at least 30 minutes before you drink it because it's always nice when bubbles are a little bit cold. Because it's a red wine, I wouldn't recommend to drink it as cold as a, for example, traditional sparkling metal or a white sparkling wine. Um, so you can see it's very dark. The Malbec that we use for that um, particular wine has a lot of color in the skin. And it's very floral. You can smell violets, red plum, ripe cherries, ripe strawberries. It's very nice. It's, um, it's a very nice Christmas wine because it's red wine, but it's also sparkling. So you can sit near the fireplace and they enjoy that wine without any food and it's totally fine. Or if you want to pair it, um, I actually opened myself a bottle like that and I had it with um, a beef roast and potatoes and it was fantastic. Everyone loved it. It's delicious. It's, um, it's juicy. It's uh, very light. You almost barely see the, barely feel the tannins. Um, it's drinking really well. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful wine to have on its own. This is our legacy Roussan Vionnier Marsan 2019. So this is always a name that is tricky to pronounce because it's three varietals and the first one starts with an R, which I know it's tricky. Uh, but those are three varietals from south of France, um, originally planted there, that you can um, find mostly in the Appellation Côte d'Orne. That's where they're originally from. Uh, we're lucky to have these in Niagara and uh, this blend is usually very nice, very floral, um, and the Viognier is one of the less acid white wine grapes that you can find. Um, so let me give you a tip. When you find a bottle that is waxed at the top, you don't have to worry about using the knife on the corkscrew. You just go directly through it. And that's the easiest way and the cleanest way to open a bottle with the wax. Because the wax, you see, just breaks right there and then that saves you the hassle and it's also safer. A lot of people got cut themselves trying to open a bottle with wax. So that's a little bit of a health and safety tip here. So this is in, in our legacy series. So our legacy series are very hands off in terms of winemaking. So these grapes didn't receive any yeast or any winemaking product addition during the process. So this has been wild fermented. When I say wild fermented, it means that we didn't add selected yeast in our process to do the fermentation. The fermentation happens constantly. We do age this wine in oak and it's beautifully, this open on sort of like some vanilla aroma, very fresh and ripe pear, um, like stone, like, Niagara peach, like a juicy ripe in the summer. It's beautiful. Very well balanced, elegant. So this is a white wine that is like considered as full body. So if you look in the glass, when you taste the wines, a lot of people ask me, oh, like, oh, what about the legs? So the legs is, are an indication on the alcohol level, the sugar level, and also what we call the glycerol level. So the slower and the bigger they get and down the glass, usually like the more full bodied the white wine is. So because of that soft acidity, the best way to pair this wine for me is like um, when you do like a fish in the oven. 
uh, with like a little bit of the vegetables. When you put, when you wrap your fish in the foil and then you put the vegetable, put it in the oven, that's a perfect example to pair with. So this is our Pinot Noir 2017 from the Lowry Vineyard in Niagara. So let me tell you a little bit about the Lowry Vineyard. Um, this vineyard was, if the story I've heard is true, was planted before Canada was even Canada. So before Canada was even a country. Um, so we're lucky to have grapes from this vineyard and uh, we've been working with these people since uh, uh, the beginning of Adamo. And this is the vintage 2017. Um, we're really happy about that wine. It's drinking really well right now. Um, and we, looking at the color and the aromatics, this is on the ripe, ripe red cherries. There is notes of leather. There is notes of like porcini's. Um, you can feel the vanilla coming from the oak. So this wine's been like most of our wines, but for the Pinot Noir, we use, uh, only, we use only French oak for all our wines, but this Pinot Noir is 10 months in French oak, rather than in our Cabernet or more Bordeaux varietals are usually 15 to 18 months. So after 10 months of aging, we bottle them. And you can still feel the influence of the oak, it's really nice. The wine is well balanced. The acidity is still there. It's starting to fall a little bit, um, but there is still enough tannins and mid, and mid padded to hold the wines together. And it's drinking beautifully right now. So I would recommend that you don't cellar that wine anymore and that you're drinking rather, you know, within the next six months. There is not, we, we don't send that wine for you to put it in your cellar, but for drinking. And this will pair exact perfectly with mushroom risotto. This is my favorite pairing for Pinot Noir, so I might repeat that over time. But um, if you're looking for something else, um, definitely uh, a roast chicken in the oven is perfect for Pinot Noir too, and especially that one.